Hey guys, welcome to the sixth episode of Codex City, and today we're going to be building the cargo station for the downtown and also the port. So to begin with, what I have done over here is that I have actually elevated the cargo station, so uh, I don't have to bring the railway uh, railway tracks down, which does not break the idea of uh, the idea of the elevated railway in the city. And to cover up the terrain glitches, I have actually used those huge warehouses to cover it up. So since the moment I've placed the cargo station you can see that there are, there are a lot of trucks which are already coming into the downtown to get to the cargo station and transport all the goods outside the city and towards the industrial areas. I actually tried a lot of different designs of the cargo station but I didn't succeed in um, most of them. I finally decided to do one of those. I, I even tried making the underground uh, cargo facility like what Flux did in Avalon but I wasn't able to do that because uh, getting the tracks underground from an elevated position with a smooth slope would take a lot of area which would actually, um, which would actually end up being a mess. The warehouse doors which I'm placing right now have actually come pretty handy in uh, the entire series. I've not only used them here but on the airport also. So why I've actually I've actually placed these because the trains when they come in they before they used to look like they're just gonna crash into the wall. So now once I place these doors they look like they're going into like a tunnel area and it looks pretty good actually. I've placed these storage yards over here, I don't know what exactly they're called, they're from Industries DLC again, so I've placed these so that it looks more like a storage facility away, uh, other than the train facility, so the trucks can directly come out and maybe store goods into these uh, storage facilities. I've placed 8 of these uh, cargo yards in the, this thing, so that I have every type uh, so every type of goods will have one cargo yard over here though i haven't put any of the forestry or farming industry so four of them are still gonna remain empty uh, whereas the f whereas the other four will be filled with the uh, plastics petroleum metals and glass and this is just me taking a quick peek on my transport system and just making sure if everything's working properly or not So there was this problem which I was facing while recording this episode and I want to talk about it real quick because it's actually a pretty important thing. The problem was congestion on my railway track. So what actually was happening is that my central station is unnecessarily forming passenger trains. Like there are empty passenger trains just spawning and leaving one after the other, one after the other. And they just don't seem to stop. And since all my industries are up and running without any commercial zones to send all the goods to, there were a lot of cargo trains which were coming out of the city because that was only the uh, there was that was the only way from where the goods could come out of the city and get into the city. Um, actually, because I haven't set up the port yet and I didn't place any airport also, so the trains were the only method uh, apart from the roads from which the trains uh, from which the goods would actually leave the city. 
So there was a lot of cargo trains also on the track which actually bottlenecked the railway tracks a lot. And I later solved that problem by just bulldozing the old station and replopping the central station right there where it was. As you can see this is the part where I actually start building the port and my first my original idea was that I would use the cargo hub from the After Dark DLC I think um, which which has the train and the cargo ship thing on it and I actually tried placing them but they just don't seem to be working out so well so I decided that I'll create my own custom port Before I start placing any prop cranes, I actually decided to give the road connections here first so that I have at least a basic structure of how my port is going to look and how big it is going to be. So I placed the one way roads which would actually be the only way to get in and out of the port um, from here. By the way, the small docks which you just saw me place over there, those are the concrete docks by Strictoaster. I don't know, I'm not sure which series he used it in. Um, I think it was in Sinu itself, uh, but uh, uh, they're pretty, uh, they're actually very useful because they take up a very small space and they also spawn all the cargo ships you need. And I decided to only place three of them, rest all the ships which are going to be placed on the port are going to be props. Using Move It, I've actually put those cargo docks under the ground so that when I paint the entire thing with surface painter, you can't exactly see those uh, cargo, uh, those cargo concrete uh, blocks kind of thing just coming out of the key walls over there. And because it looks very weird, and now I'm placing the the cargo stations over here, so the cargo route is gonna be something like this. Uh, the cargo ships bring in the goods via the sea routes, and those uh, from there the goods will be loaded on the trucks which will go around the port and drive straight into those cargo stations from where the goods will be loaded onto the trains and the trains will take it to the industrial area and will come back the same way. As you have seen there are uh, most of the ports have these huge ship cranes coming out of the ports like that and the ships are parked right under them. I'm just calling them ship cranes because I don't know what they're exactly called. If there's anyone who knows what they're exactly called, do enlighten me. And I've placed that container crane right there and you can see how the port looks a bit more different when I surface painted the entire thing and you can also see that the port is now functional you can see the trains coming in you can you can see the train you can see the trucks go into the cargo station and I think it looks pretty good till now now the problem which I faced was I didn't leave place for the containers and these huge oil tanks which are supposed to be there so I decided that I'll move it a bit more down so that I have enough room to put at least one layer of these um, of these containers and all the and all those tanks over there. Before we go ahead into the video, for the people who like the songs I play in my videos, um, these all these songs are provided by Monster Cat, so a huge shout out to them and to all the individual artists who have actually uploaded these songs on their monster on the monster cat uh, pages and i've left the link to the monster cat youtube channel in the description so you guys can go check it out and give these artists a view and if you like them do actually support them because they're really nice as you can see all the songs which i have played in my uh, in my videos whether it's my intro my outro or the or the songs which i have played in the background they're really amazing and i like them so and I'm pretty sure even you will like them, just try it out once.
anyways getting back into the video um these are the container ships which i spoke of which i'll be placing as props actually i've removed a few of them because they were clipping the ships which are being spawned during uh, the game Instead of individually placing every pile of container, I got these container packs which were actually used in the rail yard also in the previous episode, I think. Um, but th I like these um, because every, every time I place these buildings, they have a unique stack of uh, containers and I really like them a lot. So I just used move it to copy them multiple times and I filled up the entire port. Because if you actually look up a port in real life, um, they have a lot of these containers spread out throughout the entire area uh, like when I, when I say a lot there are a lot like to be honest there are seriously many of those right there You just saw me place a few more of those huge oil tanks because these are the kind of things which are expected to be there on the port. Another small detail I decided to add over here next to the cranes was that uh, there were a few truck trailers which I have placed here, a few empty few which have been loaded with the container it's because there are there is always movement of uh, containers on the port. There are always these cranes picking up and dropping the, the these these containers onto different trucks and trains and it's 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 a very big mess. So I just decided I'm gonna do these over here and I placed a few of those with containers, few of them without containers and a few of them with the truck's front part attached to it. Again, like the downtown cargo station, I've added a few more warehouse storage areas and cargo yards in the area so that those trucks which have um, which have extra load of these of these goods, they can you know directly come and store it in these places and they don't have to go anywhere else to store these uh, goods. Just another important thing as usual, um, you have seen me do this I don't know how many times now, at least 4 to 5 times you must have seen me do this over here and it's just um, you know a necessary thing that you're supposed to have parkings in the places where people work. Like I said before, this is the part where I'm attaching the front part of these trucks to only a few of them and the good part I like about these things is that they change color on their own. I don't have to individually pick uh, the front part of these trucks which have different colors. They just switch colors every time I place one of those.
and I've actually done a lot of train watching in this episode which I've actually cut out most of it and you won't be seeing actually most of it you'll be having only a few of those footage during the video by the way this is not the final look of the port the final look of the port actually looks much bigger which I have uh, that, that's actually because I have actually revamped the entire railway system uh, in my city because there was a lot of rail traffic because of the cargo and a few cargo and the uh, passenger trains being on the same line so after I think a few episodes I have revamped the entire my uh, entire cargo yeah uh, cargo port and even the rail yard which and I've made it actually bigger it's not smaller or the same it's I've actually made both of them much bigger and I've done all of it off camera because it's a very boring uh, thing to watch I, I'm pretty sure you guys wouldn't like uh, you know you wouldn't like to watch just me doing the same thing again and again I've already done those things in previous episodes so I felt it wasn't necessary to repeat that This is actually the part where I lay down the road system and a few parkings for the commercial area which I'm going to be building right north of the like right above the cargo station which we have built so that the trucks don't have to go far into the downtown to deliver these goods and I think this is the biggest uh, commercial district of the city and yeah so that's the biggest commercial district of the city and it has all uh, and all the buildings in the area are high density uh, commercial buildings which are there in the game one thing that I noticed after placing so many uh, such a huge commercial district, uh, district was that um, I actually had uh, reduced the number of exports and those goods which I produced from my industries actually started coming to these commercial districts instead of actually going out of the city and the number of trains on the tracks reduced. Just in case if any one of you want Samber's uh, the tutorial on making a realistic uh, city port, I will leave it in the description. It's actually on the City Skylines official channel. So I guess we're coming to the end of this episode. If you like my content and wish to see more, please do subscribe to my channel. And if there's something you want me to improve in, whether it's my voiceover or content, please feel free to write it down in the comments or get in touch with me on Instagram or Twitter. So this is it for this episode. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.